everyone, today I thought I'd show you how I go about painting a black cow. And this animal is taking a little bit of a rest uh, amongst the gorse and heather up on Dartmoor. So it's actually going to be a cow that's lying down. And I'm beginning using a Burnt Umber Liquitex acrylic paint marker. And this allows me to put down paint lines very, very quickly, as you can see. And I don't have to keep repeatedly going back to the palette to refresh in the way that you would if you were using a brush. So there's the head of our cow. And then there are a few creases in the neck here. This is the line of the back. A little bit of a bump there and then the hip creates another lump in the back there and then the foreleg you can just see a suggestion of that elbow joint there and then there's a fold in the flesh as the the rest of the leg kind of tucks under the body And then, as I said, this animal's bedded down in the, the heather and grass, so I need to indicate that this cow isn't sat on a hard concrete floor. Um, there's lots of, lots of flowery plants encroaching on the, the lower line there, so we can't see that. OK, and then we'll pop in an indication of some plant life behind as well. So there we go, we've got the outline of our cow now. So just a quick check to see that everything looks okay. And the proportions don't look too bad, so I'm going to proceed by shading in much of the line work that I've done using the same burnt umber. And as I'm doing this, I'm also creating, or beginning to create, a sense of texture and I'm doing that by ensuring that for the most part the direction of the lines I'm putting down or the marks I'm putting down with the marker they tend to follow either the contours or the direction of the hair on the animal's body. Now you can see the marker is uh, beginning to lose paint from its nib now, so I will eventually have to, you know, depress the mark, depress the nib, in order to reload. But for now, I'm quite happy with the dry brush effect that I'm getting, and I'm just going to use that until until it becomes awkward to do so, basically. So when the nib becomes very very dry, uh, then it, then I'll refresh it at that point. But by working in this way, I'm effectively putting down a semi-transparent layer of paint. So if I want a darker area, I can just go over again with another layer. So there's a region of shadow on the lower half of the animal here. And tucked in here as well. I've already put that bit in. There's also some shadow down here as you would expect, where the leg is tucked under the body and the ears are considerably darker. Okay, so we're off to a reasonable start. I'm now going to change colour. And I'm actually switching to thalcyanine blue. And I'm going to use that over the top of the burnt umber. And if I, you know, come out from the outline I've had before, that's because I'm correcting the line. But it also has the effect of giving the appearance of a highlight, a bluey highlight, on the coat of the animal. Now, where the blue goes over the already established burnt umber, you can see that it makes it you know, very much darker. And that's fine, because 
We're painting a black animal here, but uh, black things, black animals, often have a multitude of subtle colours due to the reflected light when it bounces off uh, of their coats. So introducing a bit of blue, or you know, the suggestion of some blue, or some deep bluey browns, makes for a much more interesting image than if I simply blocked everything in, in black. So I'm essentially repeating what I did with the burnt umber now, but I am still looking at things with a critical eye. So I'm still looking to improve on the marks that I've already put down. So that's working quite well. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is introduce some darker regions and for the very, very deep shadowy area. And to do that, I've switched to using Prussian blue. So that gives a much deeper appearance of shadow than the lighter blue that I just used. So although I'm using the marker pens, I am applying the paint in a layered approach in much the same way that I would if I was using a brush. So I'm just putting in a couple of little blocks of shadow to indicate the general position of the eyes. Still not going into too much detail. And a couple of little marks to indicate the position of the nostrils. And now what I want to do is introduce some colour to the, the ground so that the cow isn't just floating in free space. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, for this part of the painting, but as I said, I just want a suggestion of the plant life that is surrounding this cow. So I'm using cadmium yellow to indicate the colouring of some of the yellowy grasses or the gorse that's present up on Dartmoor. And in some cases, I'm using the burnt umber line that I put down in other cases, I'm going to completely ignore that. We just want to show that there are some vibrant colours around this very dark animal. And as well as gorse, there's plenty of heather up on Dartmoor as well. And that usually has uh, delightfully bright flowers. Uh, so I'm using a magenta marker now to indicate the presence of some of those. And we'll pop in some magenta marks over the top of the darker colours that we've already put down. And notice that as I do this, I'm changing and varying not only the angle of the nib, but also the part of the nib which contacts the page. Next, I'm going to apply some neutral grey just to reduce the amount of pure white paper that's showing through. 
And I'm going to do that in a rather haphazard mo motion, as you can see, or haphazard manner, I should say. And when I've done this, I'm going to put some green over the top of both the grey areas and the, what, the unpainted white areas. So I've switched to fluorescent green now. And as I said, we're just very loosely, we just want to put our very dark animal against something other than a pure white background, but at the same time, indicate the type of plant life that this particular cow has decided to take a, ne uh, a rest in. Okay, and now I'm going to block in a very light blue to indicate the sky in the background. And this particular marker is actually just called light blue, which is uh, perfectly appropriate. So what I'm going to do is keep my marks fairly horizontal and allow the blue to become lighter as we approach the animal. But again, I just want something other than a completely pure white background for the most part. I think, uh, I think I will leave this area of white here. I quite like the contrast of that against the very dark shadow. But now you can see that quite quickly the animal is occupying an environment rather than just floating within the middle of the paper. And now I'm going to use a couple of different colours to start to add just a few uh, extra highlights and regions of detail on the animal. So I'm starting with some iridescent antique gold. And I'm just going to very lightly feather some of that over certain areas of the animal's coat. I'm not going to do too much, but it does provide a lovely contrast with the blues and the darks. And I'm going to use that colour to pick out where the light is catching the hairs around the edge of the animal's ear, just on the uh, on the left ear there. Now I'm not going to do that all the way around, I'm going to change the colour as I get closer to the head of the animal. But we will use the same gold in just a couple of areas on the top of the head, and I'll do a touch on this ear as well. We don't want too much. Next I'm going to a light blue violet marker, again, just to pick out a few little areas where the light is catching. As I mentioned right at the start, there are some folds in the, in the skin of the animal, uh, in the neck region here. I'm just going to use this violet to pick out a couple of areas where the light is catching those. And I'm going to continue to use the same colour where the light is striking the top of the cow's nose. Now I mentioned before that I wasn't going to continue to use the gold all the way around the ear, so I'm going to use some of this violet there as well. And as you saw, I've already put a few marks of violet on the other ear to show some of the hairs, the longer hairs that are cascading over the forehead of the animal and also on the top of the ears as well.
Okay, I think that's enough of the violet. The next color is dioxazine purple. I think I've pronounced that correctly. Apologies if not. And I'm going to use that on part of the nose here for the shadow over that eye and also over this one. And I'm also going to indi indicate the very dark of the eye. Notice I'm using a, uh, a smaller nibbed marker pen now. And while those little patches of purple are drying, I've now switched to a small marker of brilliant blue. <clears throat> Excuse me. A small marker of brilliant blue. And I'm using that to finalise some of the areas around the nose. Now the lower lids of the cow's eye are a much lighter colour. So I'm just using a little bit of yellow ochre. And I need to be quite careful because I'm using the just the edge of this rather large 15mm uh, nib. There we go. And then finally, just a couple of touches of white here and there. I put a little bit too much on there, so I'm just taking some of that off with my finger. Also pop a little bit of white on the lower parts of the nostrils and a little touch on the top of the nose. A couple of places on the head, the ears, and then I'm going to fire in a few bursts of white to represent some long grasses. And I'm actually going to put in some patches of white here as well, because the green that I put down before isn't showing up all that well over the dark colours. So once this, these patches of white have dried, I'm going to put green over the top of that again. In fact, what I've actually decided to do is I've got some uh, acrylic paint on a small brush and I'm just going to tidy up and make the lines on the undersides of these eyes a little bit more precise so that we can see uh, the eyes are a little bit too obscured in shadow at the moment and a little bit ill-defined. So I've made those um, yellow ochre marks much more curvy and continuous. And a little bit of artistic license here, but I'm going to use some Silurian Blue to just define the upper lines of the uh, of the eyes and pop a little highlight in as well. There we go. Now the white's dried now, so so although I said I was going to put green on top, I will do that in just a second. I'm putting some yellow on first, but not over all of the white. And 
having done that, now I'm coming back with the green. I've just realised that what I would like to do is just make the plant life come up around the, the animal a little bit more here so that he, uh, he or she, I think it's a she, is very much bedded down in the undergrowth. So it looks like she's more settled and in a, in a nook in the ground. So we'll add a few more bursts of yellow. Here and there, and then a few touches of white, pure titanium white, to indicate some little flowers or blades of grass that are catching the light. So, as you can see, the acrylic paint markers are a really quick and efficient way of putting down, you know, the description of an animal and suggesting a background space and sky in quite a short amount of time. Now, now I have a lot of choices. I can either keep this as it is, I can paint over the top using a brush in the conventional way, perhaps to build up thicker layers for the foliage to bring those forward a little bit more. Um, so it's a really great, really fun, really expressive way of working. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I don't know if you just heard that meow, but my cat is hungry, so I have to go and feed him. Um, so please join me for the next video, and I'll see you again. Thank you very much for watching.